Hello, my name is Brian Leatham. I'm a senior software engineer at Netflix, and I'm here to talk to you about the developer portal we're building out for our Netflix engineers, specifically how we're leveraging end-to-end -end workflows as a mechanism to attract users to our developer portal and to keep them coming back. The problems that we're solving with our developer portal, they're not new. They're probably really similar to the problems that you folks in turn are solving with your developer portals. They include things like product discovery, um, knowledge and support. So we have a number of products and experiences for our engineers as they manage a software throughout its software development lifecycle. They can work with many different tools across many different UIs and have a disconnected experience between those UIs, between those tools. Not all UIs are gonna use the same design patterns, the same component implementations, and folks are not able to leverage or build up and leverage a muscle memory as they flip between tools. Documentation for the tools uh, can be out of date or missing, um, isn't easily searchable and discoverable. So this is something that um, we're trying to resolve for our users. Finally, the goal of managing multiple services and software is a capability we want to provide. Our platform tools to date tend to focus on a single software experience. They don't target multiple softwares or target the use case of a team that owns many services and has to end up repeating actions many times over the, their fleet of software for the different services that they own. So to solve these problems, we develop the unified developer experience strategy. Uh, it solves, uh, a no this goal is to solve a number of these concerns. The strategy is multifaceted and forms some guiding principles for us as we bring these experiences together. So things like a uh, common information architecture and design patterns across our tool suite will improve the usability of our tools for our users. A common context and a set of, set of shared services between the tools will allow users to take the context, take what they're working with them along um, between tools and not have to reset that context at every entry point into a new tool. Lastly, we recognize that branding is important. And so we chose to name our developer portal, the Netflix console, a rather unbranded name. And we wanna focus on the capabilities of console rather than individually branded products within it. In order to get a usable portal in front of our users in a timely manner, we targeted an MVP, a minimum valuable product. So what's the smallest thing that we could build that would actually provide value to our customers? We wanted to start with a connected experience. Right? So we have a number of tools. If we could bring them together through a common front door, provide context to our users, allow them to do some initial uh, exploration and discovery of the, the state of their system. And then from there, transition into the existing tool um, with deep links to pick up the context to where they're coming from. And that way give folks um, a unified entry point into the, the, the tools that they work with on a daily basis. Finally, I wanna add that our MVP was built with Federation top of mind. We wanted to leverage our provider partners in, our, in, in their contributions to the console to help us scale out uh, across all aspects, across all tools that we have in our platform offering. To do that, we leverage backstage plugins on the front end and a software catalog for federated GraphQL in the back end. With our MVP, we deliberately chose not to simply lift and shift experiences into our console. Rather, we wanted to rethink the abstractions and take the opportunity to act on a backlog of user feedback, providing our users with a better experience with the new console MVP, um, rather than simply pulling things together. A good example of this is our reimagined abstraction for our Spinnaker pipelines. We created this timeline view, which shows the execution of a number of pipelines associated with a piece of software, where we can quickly at a glance see when they're executing, identify failures, and give folks the ability to dig into a particular pipeline execution, understand what happened, and from there, link out to Spinnaker and other tools where they can 
uh, troubleshoot or get more context of what's going on. So we built our console MVP with a number of such experiences. We put it in front of our users and we got some feedback. While users were overall impressed with our unification approach and a sense of excitement for the possibilities, our users didn't feel our MVP was compelling enough to pull them away from their habits and routines they have in existing tools. They already knew where they had to go to accomplish the tasks that was at hand, and console wasn't providing anything new above, above that aside from this unified, this, um, this connected front door. So we found ourselves with this cold start problem. We needed console to be the place where developers are to attract more provider contributions. Yet we needed enough critical core functionality to bring those users in. We weren't getting the sticky user sessions, the returning customers with the connected approach we'd taken so far. So we decided to amend our approach to target end-to-end -end workflows. These are journeys that can be completed completely within console and are solely available within console. They're not um, workflows or journeys that can be accomplished in another existing tool. So then as users come back to console to complete these end-to-end -end workflows, they'll discover the other connected experiences we provide, give us feedback, help us improve console overall and make it more valuable for our users. We identified three mechanisms to introduce end-to-end -end workflows in our console. The first one I wanna call out is creating new workflows. Uh, perhaps the most obvious choice, if you need a new experience in console, let's create one from scratch. The second one is to lift existing workflows from other tools and bring them into console. And then the third avenue for introducing end-to-end uh, -end workflows in console is um, the fleet management capability. So bulk action workflows that allow users to manage multiple applications at one time. So let's dive into these uh, in more detail and talk through some examples. So new workflows, as I said, they're the obvious choice for bringing workflows into console. They're a great opportunity to solve cross-organizational concerns and associate console with an altogether new experience. However, it is a costly approach. It requires a lot of design and implementation time. One of the new experiences we provided in console is our campaign and migration tooling. So the goal of the project was to address organizational tech debt by providing tooling and holding teams accountable for the software that they own. We gave them a set of migrations that they had to work to bring their, their services, their software up to, to date, up to a current uh, state and we tracked their progress and gave them tools to um, see work outstanding to complete these migrations. We also gave tools to the leadership team so they could look at their organization and understand uh, where they might need to dedicate more resources to complete these migrations. So far, this effort has been tremendously successful, bringing in more than 500 monthly active users. The second approach I want to talk about is the lift and shift approach. This is a strong pivot from our initial strategy where we insisted on rethinking the abstractions around an experience before bringing them into console. However, there are some criteria that had to be met and this approach doesn't apply unique to uh, evenly to all experiences. For instance, the technology used to implement the experience has to be compatible with our console. For us, this means the design system and the component library and the backend APIs have to be compatible. For instance, we leverage a lot of GraphQL in our, in our console. So experiences using GraphQL are better aligned. And finally, the abstractions need to be sufficiently self-contained in the, the, the system that they're coming from um, to be able to survive the transplant. But when it can be applied, the influx of users you get is immediate. You're taking users who are already using a, a workflow and you bring them into console. We're able to leverage existing communications and notification streams to redirect traffic to console. One great candidate for this lift and shift strategy is our managed delivery experience, initially built into Spinnaker. So it was developed using our Hawkins design system and speaks directly to a GraphQL backend. So it was a great fit for lifting into console. 
As a sole provider of managed delivery experience, users will be directed to console through the Slack and email notifications that they get uh, when they need to perform actions like manual judgments or uh, investigate failed environments. Observability tools are another example of a set of experiences we were able to lift into console. With our observability tools, we integrated them using Webpack Module Federation to bring the experiences into console at runtime. So Module Federation is great. If you haven't heard of it before, think of a SPA, single page application, that retrieves a set of bundles from a front end server to render the experience for the user. As they navigate through the application, the browser will download additional bundles with uh, modules and components in them to fulfill, to flesh out the application experience. With Webpack Module Federation, we enable the browser to get those Webpack bundles from different front ends. We pull down the modules and components, uh, mount them in the application, and we give users a single page application experience that is served by multiple front ends. So while it still required technological alignment on the design system and build tools, for instance, we still need to be using the same Hawkins design system and component library, um, it requires no movement of code like the managed delivery use case we just talked about. Lastly, we looked at fleet management and bulk operations as a mechanism to, to introduce new workflows in the console. Here you see the overview page for a software collection. This enables users to assess the state of their software in their collection um, at a glance. There we provide these overview cards that give them the ability to see all the software in their collection and then drill down into uh, more detailed pages showing more information of the, the software in that state. Here's an example of the managed delivery experience that we talked about in the collection view. So here I have a number of software available in this, this collection, my team software. And then I'm showing folks the um, state of the environments uh, of, the, of the delivery for those softwares. Before console, this isn't something that was possible, this multi-software, this collection view. Users were only able to find this information one software at a time. The last experience I wanna call out is our new ownership experience. It's an example of both a new workflow, something we developed for console, as well as a multi-software or bulk operation workflow. So improving software ownership is a cornerstone to many of the experiences we're building out in console. Campaigns, migration, and team software pages all rely on accurate ownership data to deliver an optimal experience. With the ownership experience we built into console, we have given users the ability to claim software, to give it to another team, or to flag it for you. I don't know whose software this is. Uh, you go figure it out. This is all done through a series of bulk management workflows, whereas before console, ownership could only be done one software at a time. So what's next? In our journey so far with our develop portal, we've tackled the manage and observe views, giving folks the ability to assess the state of their software. <coughs> uh, in this quarter, coming quarter, we're gonna tackle the discover group, help folks identify the tools and services available to them to, um, to build out their software and to maintain it. And lastly, we wanna to get to the create and modify verbs. Thank you for uh, sitting through the session. I'll be available in Slack after this to answer any questions or hear any thoughts that you have on the topic.